Hi, and welcome to our presentation about the Common Application Essay and Letters of Recommendation. Uh, joining me today are some of my colleagues. I'll let Susan begin with introductions of her college. Hi, I'm Susan Hillman de Castaneda, Director of International Admissions at Earlham College. We're located in Richmond, Indiana, in the Midwest of the United States, and we have about a thousand students. 22% of them are international students coming from over 60 countries. We offer 40 majors and minors. You have until the end of your second year to actually declare your major if you want to take some courses and see what you're really interested in, opportunities to study abroad, um, and be very, very involved in campus and student organizations, athletics, music, dance, and theater. So Earlham's promise to you is that our collaborative learning community will offer you, uh, will motivate you and inspire you by offering transformational experiences and opportunities that will help you become a catalyst for good in a world full of needs. Thank you. Hi. Thanks, Susan. My name is Marcy O'Malley, and I'm the Director of International Admissions at Lawrence University. And Lawrence is also uh, located in the Midwest. We're in beautiful Appleton, Wisconsin, one of the safest cities in the United States. Um, and we have a student population of about 1,600 students, co-ed, men and women. We're a very residential campus. We're a nationally ranked liberal arts college and conservatory. So about 25% of our students study getting a bachelor's of music and 75% of our students are getting a bachelor's of art. We're one of the only colleges in the country that is a conservatory of music and undergraduate university completely devoted to the education of undergraduate students. We do have 36 different majors, 23 different varsity sports, and a number of different clubs and activities for our students to do. The Lawrence students are very, very engaged. And one of the things that Lawrence does particularly well is help individual students find their path by exploring the intersectionalities of their interests and talents. So we would be asking you to bring your best self to the university and really engage in your learning and really try and find those special places where your talents and your academic programs and wonderful faculty can intersect and you can develop your um, curriculum based on what you're interested in which has led to a lot of success with our students. We have almost 98% of our students getting into graduate school or job placement six months after graduation. So, thanks. And hey, I'm Erica Riesbeck. Uh, I'm the Associate Director of Admission at the University of Richmond. And we're located in a different Richmond than Earlham. Uh, mm -hmm. We're in Richmond, Virginia, which is the capital city of the Commonwealth of Virginia. Uh, so our, our university is located about 10 kilometers away from the city center. So located in sort of a safe residential setting. Uh, we have 3,000 undergraduate students represented from about 70 um, countries, uh, representing around 11 to 12 percent of our overall student population. Uh, Richmond is a little bit different than a typical liberal arts and science university. Um, we do offer as well a top-ranked business school and the country's first undergraduate school of leadership studies, so going beyond sort of that typical arts and science offering business and leadership. Uh, we guarantee funding for students up to $4,000 during the summertime to either pursue a faculty mentored um, research project or an unpaid summer internship um, because we believe that what you're doing outside the classroom is going to matter just as much as you work to advance your goals for either graduate school or a job um, after you leave us. Um, ranked number 22 this year for U.S. News and World Report, Richmond really tries to attract um, a diverse group of students to our campus to engage in our small communities. And so that's one of the reasons that Marcy, Susan, and I are chatting with you today is to talk about the importance of essays and recommendation letters because we all represent small liberal arts colleges who really focus on that idea of community on our small campuses. So to kick it off and tell, tell you why the college essay is important, I'm going to pass it to Marcy. Thank you so much, Erica. Um, yeah, so I think it was interesting listening to us talk a little bit about our universities. What probably comes across is that each university has its own personality and we're looking for fit. So when you go through the admissions process, you're going to be trying to present your best self 
through your grades and through your recommendations and through your essay. And what the colleges that are looking for are they're looking for students who are really gonna thrive and succeed at their colleges. So I just wanna take a moment to talk about the role of the college essay. Um, what the college, in admissions, there's really three types of admissions. There's uh, threshold admissions where a, a university just looks at um, if you meet a threshold of grades or SATs, you're in, or if you don't meet that, you're out. Or there's open admission where they not they don't really require to have too many um, uh, rec too many criteria to have been met besides maybe high school graduation. And then there is the holistic admission review, which is what most of the private liberal arts colleges uh, use in the United States. Holistic admission review means that we're trying to find out a lot about you. Your grades and academic preparation, of course, we have academic, rigorous academic programs and we have to make sure that you'd be able to thrive there. But we're also looking for what interests you and what motivates you and what you're looking for in your college experience. So when you talk about the role of the, of the college essay, it really is your only opportunity in the admissions process to have your voice straight from your mouth. You don't have to have, you're able to tell your own story. So we think that you should consider writing well, thinking analytically and reflectively, and contributing something to our campus. Those are three things that you really want to have as your checklist, all your college essay has to have. And if we could just go to the next one then, Erica. <clears throat> Thanks. Now, a lot of people are worried about what they should write about, and they kind of get wrapped around, what, what should I talk about? And the idea is that we're looking for a fit. We want to know you, so you should talk about something that's meaningful for you. It's not necessarily the topic. You could, I've read very interesting essays about a lost sock in the laundry, and you've I've read very un, in, uninteresting essays about very lofty topics. It's about how you present the topic, what it means to you, and what that reveals about yourself. And then we could just go to the next slide, please. The common some of the common application prompts, um, Susan and Erica, do you use the common application as well? We do yes. at Lawrence. Yes. yes. So that's great. So we're all using the common application. And the common application gives their students an opportunity to um, write the essay. And there's some, here are some of the prompts that they use to try and pull out some of those things that are important to you. What are you looking for in a college? Um, and again, you really want to be authentic. You want to find your voice, um, but you want to have it polished. You want to be the best representation of yourself. So you want to proofread, and we have some tips coming on later on about that. But here are some of the common application prompts. And you can see they talk about things that are the jumping off point of the first question is like, what is meaningful to you? Discuss your personal growth in the section quest, second question. The third one, they want to talk about your thinking. Fourth one, what captivates you? So you can see in the common application prompts, <clears throat> they're giving you the opportunity to answer a question in a way that makes you very present in the essay and allows you to talk about what your values are, what you're interested in, what you're looking for at a university, and what you plan to contribute to that community. So those are some of the things just to start us off is why it's an important part of your application, why you have so much control and what you're trying to say about yourself, and then where the places are in the prompts that gives you the opportunity to start to have that um, <clears throat> contribution. So thanks. Well, the next slide, um, it's a question we all want to know, like, just tell me the secret. I'll do it, but just tell me the secret. The secret really is your imagination, your craftsmanship, your ability to write, your ability to capture my attention as I'm reading your application and, and the story that you're going to tell. So this really is in the whole application, it's your one point really where your authentic voice can be heard. Um, it's not telling us statistics about your academic life or all the clubs and organizations you've been involved in. This is your story. This is your voice. That's the secret. We want to hear your voice. We could move on to the next slide. So I've worked in admissions for 20 years. I figure I have read about 8,500 essays. And there are a few that, that really are, I remember for a very long time. Um, so a few intriguing opening sentences 
the other thing that's that we need to tell you is some schools have maybe five minutes to read your whole application. That's not very much time. So we need you to get right to the point. I, you need to capture our attention in the opening sentence. So just, just this first one, I'm not a fiction writer, I'm not a poet, I'm a documentarian. And that really captured my attention because not many 17 or 18 year olds think of themselves that way. And this person's ability to say that um, as, and she's very, she uses very beautiful language like handfuls of memory still from my fingertip. Those types of um, phrases are very nice, but yet it's very clear and very um, beautiful language. Um, and then the second one talks about the risks that the person has taken. A lot of times, one of, one of the prompts could be, tell us about a risk that you've taken. How did you manage that risk? How did you overcome it? And so this person just stating right up front, this is the biggest risk I've ever taken. And then tells us why, that they were a foreign exchange student. Um, this next one really captured my attention. Like I, I am a statistic, right? Most of us want to think, we're individuals. I, I, I'm unique. But here she's saying right off the bat, I'm a statistic. And it's like, okay, well, let me see why you're telling me that you're a statistic. The last one I just liked because of the images that were put in. I could picture the person lugging a suitcase or a bookcase upstairs and two flights of stairs, getting sweaty. And so I wanted to know, okay, why was this person lugging a bookcase upstairs? So they captured my attention. And I was looking forward to reading the rest of the essay. You want to go on to the next one? So um, I thought it might be helpful if you just saw how a couple of students develop their essay in the various paragraphs of, of their essay. So this one, this one opened by saying, I've had 17 birthdays, but only three birthday wishes. And that really caught me because um, most of us have a different wish every birthday, but this young woman had the same birthday wishes. Oh, she had three birthday wishes for 17 years um, that I could fly like a bird, that I had my own horse and that my brother were alive. So right there in that first sentence, I could see her wishes, her desires, something that she would never be able to fly like a bird, right? She might be able to have a horse, her brother would never come, her brother had passed away and never come back to life. So you kind of have some empathy for this person. It's like she's been through a lot already. And then she talks about the life and how, or the loss and how it affected her family. Um, and it, it, led, it led her to an interesting observation as a young person that bad is closely connected to good, that even the darkest tragedies can inspire light. And that some, that's an insight into who she is and the perspective that she has on life and how she has confronted very difficult situations. Um, and that gave her an enduring optimism. She talks about in the third paragraph, realizing that there will be stumbling blocks and disappointments in life, but something probably good could happen. Her closing statement, forming beliefs that good can often be born out of bad circumstances. She keeps her brother alive in her optimism and someday she will be ready to fly. So it was a nice way to close it because she tied the opening to the closing. I learned a lot about her motivation, her determination, her persistence, her ability to confront difficult situations in life. Do you wanna move on to the next one? Let me, okay, so Noah wrote about, um, right away he says, I had a transformational experience last summer. Um, and I like the way that he used um, the parentheses to tell me what he thought an adult was, that it, um, adult and not a grown up, um, it implies maturity, um, more maturity than the word adult does. Um, and he talked about attending um, a, a meeting for his church and how he he was finally listened to that people really wanted to listen to what he had to say 
and he and he appreciated the respect that that listening um, afforded him. That he realized that he had something important to say, and that people respected him when he talked. And and then sort of concluding it by saying that we as human beings, these are things that we yearn for: to be listened to and to be respected. So through this essay, I saw his his willingness to be um, transformed, to learn new things, to see things from different perspectives, and a little bit about his own personal values, that to him it's Im important that, that we be listened to and respected. So next slide. So one of the, the most difficult things to do, of course, is to even start writing. You know, we've shared some examples of essays that worked and why we found them intriguing, but how do you even start to figure out what your topic is going to be, even if that topic doesn't matter? Um, and there are a lot of wonderful resources out there for you to help figure it out. Um, I, one of my favorite websites is called the College Essay Guy. Um, it's all completely free. He helps not just with a common application essay, but supplemental essays to the why question, to even um, specific information and advice if you're applying for the University of California system. Um, he helps with resumes. So look for those great resources that exist out there, many of which are free. Uh, and I've included one on this slide that is from a book I found at a public library uh, called Write Your Way In. Um, and this is a similar approach that the college essay guy takes with having you as a student make a list of 20 possible topics. Um, and, and the reasoning behind this is that the first few are going to probably be pretty typical and cliche, things that anyone might write about. Uh, when you get towards the end of your list is when some kind of weird, unusual topics come out, and that's where you might find some really good nuggets um, of things that you might write about. Again, because the topic itself doesn't matter, but you have to figure out how to first start writing and what do you want to showcase about yourself and your personality, and it might come through in a list. Um, so I love this list, right? I just kind of jumped around from this top 20 list. Um, the first one being basketball, being this, this particular uh, individual's just their life. Everything revolves around basketball. Well, if a basketball player was creating their Common App essay and they have demonstrated throughout the entire application their commitment to basketball, the essay, the personal statement, might be a chance for them to not talk about basketball and to maybe focus on something else. Um, so this is one way that you can approach trying to come up with a, a unique topic or something a little bit different about yourself that might stand out um, from the rest of the applicant pool. Um, but yeah, number 16, I keep locking my keys in my car. I've actually read an essay about that and it was hilarious as it always is. So Marcy's going to share some of our, our do's and don'ts of what you should consider um, when, when writing your essay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, so I thought we'd just pause for a minute and sort of talk about some of the things that we have been in a, just a really short little list, right? So some of the things that you want to have for your college essay is you want to con consider content and form. So Erica is right that topics don't matter. I think I probably should have said don't matter. They're not, it's not what matters the most. It's what you're writing about and how you're writing about it. And then the other thing that I think Erica just um, talked about that was really, really good, I'd like to reinforce is that tell us something we don't know about you. Um, you'd be surprised. I read an essay where there was a, a young woman who was from Vietnam and she wrote her essay about how her dad what, picked her up from school every day on his scooter, which was just old and awful. And she wanted him to meet her a block away from school so her friends wouldn't see how awful his little scooter was because she wasn't as wealthy as the rest of them and um, that essay really moved us and we ended up um, getting in touch with the young woman and having uh, be able to offer her some more scholarship and that was solely based on the information that she gave us their essay which exhibited that you know the family was really behind her and she was really trying so tell us it's an opportunity to tell us something that we don't know yet about you because you don't know what that can do for your admission um, 
try and connect your essay to your values. Again, all of our, all of the universities that are here today, we're looking for students who are going to engage in our community and contribute and who you are and what you value is going to be really important to know about you. Um, be specific is just always good in, in writing um, to take the universal and make it very personal to yourself. Use an active voice. Uh, so it sounds like it's coming from you. Sometimes I tell students that if you think this is the last thing you want the person who's going to make the admissions decision know about you right before they make the decision. If you were sitting across the desk from them and they have everything in front of you, what's the one thing you want them to know about you before they decide? That's an active voice that's being very present. Um, read it out loud to yourself when you're done and see how it flows and see if it makes sense. And then <clears throat> draft long. And again, as Susan said, cut short. We love reading applications. We're really interested in you. Unfortunately, we have a lot of applications to read. So getting to the point is really, really good. And then ask a couple of other students to read or don't ask your mom because she's going to tell you it's good, but ask some friends or a, a good process would be like if you're in a class with someone and you don't know them that well and they don't know you that well, exchange college essays and then tell them what they think, tell them what you think you know about them from the essay and then ask them to do the same. And they may tell you something that came across in your essay that you didn't intend to have there at all. And so it's just, it's a nice way to do it and you'd be doing them a favor too. So buddy up with somebody that you don't know very well and, and proofread each other's essays. Can we go to the next one? The do's are over and now it's time to talk about the don'ts. <clears throat> do not, please, buy a bunch of very expensive college writing books. Eric is absolutely right. There's some fabulous resources out there and um, you should use those. Use your school, use your friends, use the web, use the public library and um, and don't get caught up in that cycle of having to spend money to really find your voice. Don't let your parent or counselor <clears throat> or a paid consultant write or overwrite your essay. Again, we want to be authentic. You're the one who's going to come to the college. What our jobs are as admissions officers is looking for those students who are really going to do well in the college. So if your college essay doesn't reflect who you really are because it was written by someone else or over edited, it does not allow us to see who the real person is. So it doesn't really help you at all. Um, don't restate the essay prompt like we were taught in high school. Don't rely on the spell check because there's, especially when you're uh, English language learners, you can have um, homonyms and things that are, um, are gonna get, not get caught up on the spell check. Don't use the thesaurus for every word. As Ke Stephen King, the great writer says, keep it simple. Um, don't write a school essay. This is your opportunity to elevate it and to become more present. Don't parrot back something, but create something of your own. And please do not skip your college essay. <laughs> Thank you. So as Marcy and Erica have already pointed to, uh, uh, you need to know your audience. You're, you're writing to get into college. And so who's going to read that application is very important and it will be a college or university admission staff member. We all read application and read the essays. You need to write to us. Like you need to capture our attention. Um, and remember that we have a voice in deciding whether your application will be approved or not. So that sort of lends itself to thinking what type of words you want to use, what really what subject matter you want to address. Um, some students take really big risks and write about things that are inappropriate for a college application. <laughs> and um, while we might have a little bit of like, okay, we'll let it slide, it, 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 varnish, it tarnishes your application somewhat if you're, if you're application essay is inappropriate. And you would think, well, who would do that? Well, actually, I've seen quite a few of them. So, um, and it also leads to the a format that you want to use. Now, we, I've seen a growth in, it's pretty clear that students are, have written their application essay on their telephone. No spell check, no capitalization, no punctuation. Please don't do that. <laughs> your telephone is not where you should be writing your application essay. So the, the appropriate format is important. 
um, prose is usually what's mostly expected. A few students who are highly talented can get away with doing poetry and or artwork. But again, it's a little bit of a risk. We're asking you to write an essay. And there are a couple reasons besides learning more about you. We need to see your writing ability, um, your ability to write something that's cohesive, that's well thought out, that's um, been, the grammar is correct, the spelling is correct, and we, we don't actually get that through a photograph or a poem. Um, so be very careful about the type of, of format that you're going to use. Um, we like creativity, yes, but to a certain extent. This, this essay fulfills many um, reasons why we ask for it, so that the form is important. So we'll move on to the next slide. So it's not just the personal statement and the common application. Um, it's also going to be supplemental essays. Uh, and so one of our biggest pieces of advice is going to be start early, stay organized, um, because it's, it can seem overwhelming when you finally get into it. So I wanted to share some examples of types of supplemental essays that might be required um, from individual universities. So the common application is where you can share all this common information, but school-specific supplements will ask you a variety of questions. And on top of that, they might ask you to do a little bit more writing. Uh, University of Chicago is famous for having some of the most creative uh, essay prompts out there, and they usually will have have, I don't know, 10 different options to choose from. It'll look overwhelming. It is definitely geared for creative minds, to say the least. So one example for this year, and they have two that are required to be written, was Do You Feel Lucky? Well, Do You Punk? Um, by Eleanor Roosevelt, which we know is incorrect. <laughs> so they're asking the student in the prompt to misattribute a famous quote and explore the implications of doing so and that meaning really fun. Um, Wake Forest actually has a lot of different short answers, as well as you have to list your top five books and why you love them. Um, and they also have give me your top 10 list, include a theme. That's it. That's the only instructions for it. Uh, again, looking for some creativity, trying to get to know you better and get to know your personality to see how you might fit into the institution. Notre Dame, um, I think many times because of, of their commitment and their religious background, ask a question about who do you aspire to serve after you graduate? Um, so Notre Dame requires three short responses, all of those a max of 200 words. Mm -hmm. So some of these essays might be short, like 200 words, some might be up to 650 words, which would be similar in length to your personal statement. I think it's harder to write less. Um, so that's why we tell you to be sure to give yourself enough time and start early because you'd be surprised how much longer it feels to write a 200 word essay than it might even a 650 word. Uh, and then this last example from Barnard College, um, what factors encouraged your decision to apply to Barnard and why do you think the college would be a good match for you? This is the quintessential why fill in the blank university. Um, a lot of colleges are also using the supplemental essays to see how truly interested you are in that institution. Um, and so they look to see, have you done some research, right? They, they're looking for specific examples that you've pulled out. And it shouldn't be something that you find in a college guidebook. Um, it shouldn't be something that you could even see on the main page of a website, but really digging in um, to decide, you know, why, why this university for me? And truly, have I done the research to make sure that I am a good fit for the university? And you can showcase that research within one of these um, typical why questions. There's also going to be a new um, optional writing section uh, for COVID-19. So it's a question that they've added this year. Um, and, and I just wanted to outline it in case you hadn't seen it and explain when you should write something and maybe when you shouldn't. Um, so they, they start off with saying community disruptions such as COVID-19 and natural disasters can have deep and long lasting impacts. If you need it, this space is yours to describe those impacts. Colleges care about the effects on your health and well-being, safety, 
family circumstances, future plans, and education, including access to reliable technology and quiet study spaces. Do you wish to share anything on this topic? Um, so there's a part where you'll be able to share information if COVID or some other natural disaster impacted your life significantly, beyond, above and beyond what others in your school might have experienced um, or within your city. Um, and so they give examples of what you might write about, though so illnesses or hardships, changes to your extracurricular commitments, inability to pursue something, maybe you had a summer job set up that was canceled, um, disruption to consistent participation, or any other personal impacts. Common Application added this because they don't want you to use that personal statement for COVID related things. Um, they want you to have the opportunity to showcase yourself uh, without that shadow of COVID, even though I know it's had a huge influence and will continue to have a huge influence uh, in your life. Your school official will also be given the opportunity to be more specific about what your school did, whether grades moved to a pass fail, how did you change from in-person to virtual? Um, was it remote instruction? Were you able to complete your exams? What happened as far as like class selection for the upcoming senior year? Uh, so there will be space um, that your school official in the secondary school report will include things pertinent to what happened uh, within your school environment that will provide additional context that we'll have in hand when reviewing your application. Um, we're also going to share our uh, our uh, supplemental essays with you as well. So while Earlham asked the quintessential question, why do you think Earlham is a good fit for you? <clears throat> okay, so a supplemental question is found outside of the common application proper, and every college has an opportunity to have member pages where we can ask additional questions that we that are just for us. So. Um, the, just to remember, when you're writing your regular common application essay, it's going to every college you apply to. So you do not want to say, and the reason I want to go to Harvard is, blah, 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 because that's going to every college. And that when I at Earlham read this, like, hmm, okay. So it, in the member page, we ask, why do you think Earlham is a good fit for you? And um, even though it's optional, you do not have to fill it out. We pay attention to, an to who answers it and who doesn't. And if, if there's, we really want to know, like, how interested are you really in my institution? And that is one place to show. So um, you need to give this part of your application as much attention as you do to your personal essay. Please be sure to proofread it everything you would do to your personal essay you also need to do to these supplemental answers um, and then you want to um, we want to just see how how interested you are don't repeat something that you've already told us in other places of your application so it's an important part of every application marcy or erica will say something about richmond yeah, so the Richmond question is actually required, so it won't be optional, but you'll have three different topics to choose from. Um, and again, it should be, you know, used to show a part of your personality, your creativity, show that you maybe have done a little bit of research on Richmond. Uh, and please, please, um, here's some do's and don'ts uh, about submitting the Richmond question. Um, I would say, yes, please research Richmond. Choose the prompt that really, calls out to you um, and write about how you might impact Richmond's community. Um, don't repeat your Common App essay. Every single year we have many, many students that copy and paste an essay from the Common Application Personal Statement into the Richmond question. Uh, that's not a great thing. Um, <laughs> As Susan said, don't name another college. Um, and don't forget to submit it. This is something that you might not realize, but when you submit your Common App to a university, there is a second step for the supplement that you have to submit that. So you submit twice. Don't forget, um, it, it is actually surprisingly easy to overlook, unfortunately. And so the uh, last thing we want to talk about briefly was our letters of recommendation. Um, the letters of recommendations are used just as Susan and Erica have said about the essay. We in the admissions office read them. They provide additional information from a, 
uh, someone who knows you very well that will talk, speak directly to your ability and your interests and your values and any stumbling blocks or difficulties that you've had and you've overcome. So they really can be very important in helping rounding out the student's um, sort of profile in the holistic review that we use. So just some tips here is check how many recommendations are required and then try very hard to have those many, that many submitted. Um, usually there's a counselor or a school official letter that is required and then a teacher recommendation. You can ask your favorite teacher, but some of the best recommendations I've ever read have been from students, teachers who in which the class the student has struggled. So the student may have struggled very and, and overcome difficulty or an exhibited great work ethic or um, come for extra help. And then you think, wow, that's that's really tells me something about how that student deals with ad adversity that I wouldn't understand if it was just a class that came very easy to them. So take a moment and, and decide. A lot of times for our student, for, for me, when we're reading um, recommendations, if it's from an English teacher and English is not your first language, I really take that recommendation to heart too. So that can be a very good, important recommendation. Um, and then outside recommendations, sometimes they're asked for, and sometimes you just have a good relationship with a coach or a mentor or an alumni or an employer. And those would also be very good, you know, be really valuable to speak to character or work ethic, anything um, outside a classroom. But usually the teacher recommendations speaking to academics is something that's probably really gonna be very valuable to us as we make our assessments. So only submit the recommendations beyond the requirement if it adds to your application. So you make sure that you read the applications, make sure that it says something good about you, it says something new about you, and it is something that you wanna have shared with the college. Thank you. And we just want to thank you for joining our presentation today to learn more about the essays and letter of recommendations. Uh, we hope you learned something and you take heed of our advice. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you.